I can't take this anymore. No, 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 no. Please stay away. Please, 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 please. Y'all, you don't understand. I'm ready to crap myself. Ooh, hey guys. It's late. It's like really late. <laughs> it's really, really, really late. I am really not used to this, but you know what? For this show, I am up when it's dropping early in the middle of the night here, just so that I can see it with my own eyes and just take it in and not have to worry about spoilers when I get up in the morning. So here we are guys for the hopefully season finale of The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live. The episode is episode six and it is called The Last Time. That's an ominous title and it gives me a little bit of anxiety, but you know what? I'm ready to just be, I'm ready. I'm ready for whatever this episode may, might bring. So it is late, as I said, I am, I'm not used to being up this late. So please forgive me if my words are not that clear or I'm stuttering a bit. It's literally because my brain is fighting not to shut down. But I think once I start watching, I'm gonna perk up a little bit more. But yeah, just a little, you know, just a little caveat, a little bit of a precursor, a little warning. Last episode, uh, recap real quick. It was all about our, our lovely couple being on the road. Everything was beautiful and idyllic. They were on their second honeymoon and things were going great up until they got faced with none other than Jadis. She managed to track them down in record time and basically said that she was gonna take them out because what she feared would happen when they got together happened. But we see that she had the opportunity. She had the jump on them. She could have taken them out in their, in their sleep, but she didn't. And Rick kind of just kept pushing at her as to why the real Jadis Anne would not just go ahead and do it. And after a series of events, she ends up getting bit. Jadis gets bit in the throat and it's a wrap for her. It's That's it. And she has a long, long winded goodbye. And in that process, she decides to try to get into heaven. And she tells Rick and Michonne where the dossier is, asks them not to go back to the CRM uh, outside of getting her fi their file back and just leave them alone. But my girl Michonne said, girl, you're not gonna rest in that kind of piece, not on my watch. So she let her know, no, we're going back and we're gonna find out all about this big brief and everyone keeps talking about. And then we're gonna work with the city and we're gonna take the CRM down because it's not the mission that's the problem, it's the means that we have an issue with how the CRM is executing it. So anyway, Rick allows uh, Jadis to leave the world as a human and not come back. And we ended the episode with it would look like a, heli a helicopter going to the jump point. As far as predictions for this episode, guys, I have no idea. I really don't. I've been really trying to stay away from the speculation. It's been everywhere. Oh my God. But if there's two things I hope to happen that I'm putting out in the universe to happen. One, I'm praying that both of my babies are going to be okay. Like I just, in my heart of hearts, I just don't believe that either of them are going to not make it out of this episode because I just don't think that Andy and Denai would sign up for that. And I think they know that the fandom would probably never recover. And two, I really want Rick to meet his babies. Like I want Rick to meet his kids, please. I need him to meet RJ, please. Ah, that would be, that's kind of the stretch goal. That's the stretch dream. But at the very least, I just want them both to be okay in some way, shape or form. I also expect that the finale will be open-ended. But yeah, I, I feel like if we can just at least get both of our babies out of here safe, and if they get back to the family, then as far as I'm concerned, we've won. That that would be enough for me. So anyways, I think I've talked enough because this is a long, ep longer episode and it's late. I don't know if I mentioned that it's late for me. So I'm gonna stop talking and get into the episode. But just before I do a reminder that if you'd like to be notified of when I upload all kinds of shows, I know that this show is gonna be over, but I react to a lot of other really cool stuff. So please go ahead and join that fam. Hit that notification bell so you can be in the know. And please show some love for this video like you guys have been. I really appreciate it. This has been so fun because of you guys. All right, that out of the way, let's get into this for the last time right now. Who we were, who we are now. I don't know if I like Rick being a voice. So, oh, where is this? My name is Michelle. Hello. I lost someone. I mean, if this is the way we're starting, I might be able to forgive whatever happens in the end. People are a resource. No, why, why are we zooming? Okay. Someone you love, I think. Y'all are you're giving this one a ring now? Do you still love me? Always. Th these are some new kinds of wedding vows. This is is this an apocalypse wedding? Go in, you get the briefing, I get the dossier. What's happening? 
Where are we? No to the city, then go home. How'd she get gear? It's never that simple. It never is, you're right. Only Rick and Michelle could find time to get it in before this all started. <laughs> Rick said, no matter what happens, I'm gonna be my baby one more time. <laughs> Hi, I'm about to try to explain how I survived two helicopter crashes in a matter of weeks. <laughs> hey, Thorn. We were going down over water and Bethune shoved me out. She saved she my sure life. She did. Why don't we just say it was Oak Four? Hmm. We're just keeping this thing going. Still trying, hey Rick? And now I realize that giving up can be a sign of strength, a commitment to something bigger than oneself. Giving up made me understand what we're really doing here. Yeah, no, she's gone, Rick. She has fully drank the Kool-Aid. He was never really here. Not in the way he should have been. That's why he died. Oh, really? You're meant to be a part of this. Oh, God. It's time to let go of his bullshit. Really? Show me the other way. <laughs> Rick's like, I almost threw up saying that. <laughs> Ew. So I'm confused. Is Michonne just sneaking in? She must be. Because why would they give her tactical gear? Oh, God. Okay, Spider-Man. This is dangerous. I don't know if I like this. I don't like this plan anymore. But I guess there's no way for them to stay together otherwise. Okay. She said international thief. Oh, yeah. She needs to get the briefing. Of course, Jadis was still painting. Oh, I bet you think you're actually cool because you do this a few times a day. Hey, Bill. And we're the dead ones, Rick. They're kind of like them. <clears throat> the sword that kills is the sword that gives life. Okay, sir on the sword. sword. Hmm. I alone decided the path ahead, and I alone want to feel the weight of it. Just you, huh? So I'll share some time with you. Maybe even ask you to carry some of that weight. Was that supposed to be inspirational? Because it felt weird. Kind of condescending, actually. Right? Like, Janus could have said if it was in a drawer, under the bed. Like... Just in my in my office. She did that on purpose. Still petty to the inner death. Breathe, Michonne. Just breathe. Breathe, 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 breathe. Oh, I forgot about the cat. See what happens when you just breathe? I get it. It's therapeutic. Now pick up all those pieces and burn them. There we go. But see that, that was extra work. But I forgive you. I mean, it has to be this way, I guess. Shit. Damn. Okay, mama's mad. That was hot. <laughs> but what you gonna do, girl? Because you're gonna have to either put something through her head or hide her quick. Because someone's gonna be looking for her. To uh, reflect on your life. Oh, God, why? After this next moment, mm -hmm. everything will change. Okay. What's the worst thing you did to make sure someone else survived? Cut off my hand. Yeah, Rick's like, I kind of have a whole montage of really crazy stuff I did. That was one of the hottest. <clears throat> I killed someone with my teeth. <laughs> yes, you did. Like they do. Sadie. I'm sorry you had to do that. Well, you don't have to be. He's like, yeah, I'm not. I've given this briefing, mm -hmm. the echelon briefing, 2,533. Wow, times. that's how many people they got to take out. <sighs> And the soldier in question has never been someone like you. Someone like me? You mean an actual A? A day completely about tomorrow. All right, let's, let's get it going. I miss you so much. We missed you too. Words can't even say it right. You don't have to. I mean, you could. We don't mind. Are we crazy? Certified. Insane. And that's why we love you. Right? I love this. Showing that they are both the same person as far as being nuts. Alcoholic father broke my jaw. I'm trying to care. I left really trying to care. I could have let the world take me away. But I came back like you. 
Oh, I don't think anyone's quite like me, sir. Keep walking, Michonne. Hurry up. Someone's gonna look for that soldier. Don't ask questions, Michonne. Stay on mission, please. My anxiety, please, sis, please. Oh, she's thinking of her family. They bombed the cities. Okafor said that they called it clearing disease vectors. Yep, dissociative language for atrocities. I saved Philadelphia by sacrificing Pittsburgh. Did you? <laughs> Rick's like, I'm actually I'm not nauseous. Into a person with your canines, but it's not nothing. Isn't that right? I don't think we could compare these, bro. I killed my past and a whole city so another could live. Interesting viewpoint. Should we be here, Michonne? I don't know what she's doing. I don't get it. So we are born this way. I mean, I think the world kind of brought it out of you, but... I guess so. Yeah? People now have 14 or so years left on this planet. Could be quicker. And it isn't just the delts. It's starvation. Tenuous balance between population and yield. Hmm. This rock will be cluttered with corpses. That's a possibility. A possibility. Yeah, man don't know nothing about nothing. Anyway. This is why we do what we do. Sure, sure. What do you do, sir? Right? Be specific. Say it out loud. <laughs> They're such badasses. Facilitate an evacuation of selected children. Exactly. They're about to take out Portland. It will result in an evacuation of possibly 10% of the children in the city before the area is gassed and its population... Oh, you said gas... Oh, no, that's a trigger for Michonne. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Up until recently, we supplied test subjects for scientific experiments to CRM run labs. Yeah, we saw that if you watch The World Beyond. Oh, didn't just die. We took it out. And in 18 hours, we will take our final action to leave us as the supreme force on this continent, maybe the world. <laughs> We will destroy Portland. <laughs> In the world. If we don't, who will? No one. You don't leave people behind. We don't. Is it bad that I don't want them to be heroes? I just want them to be people who want to go back to their kids. <laughs> the Civic Republic military will declare martial law. Among Hear the words coming out of his mouth. Do not give in to the trauma that children will experience or that the participating forces will experience. Anything changes on base, he's walking. Sorry about that. Soldiers should put the children's focus on the comfort items. Oh my gosh, look at Michonne. This is bringing back all of her PTSD from being in that mall. And children too. Like, yeah, this is two triggers for her. Oh, not Carl, not the babies. Michonne, Michonne, sit down. Michonne, what are you doing? Michonne! I mean, I guess I can't, I don't blame her. I would throw up in my helmet. I think that the next leader in the next decade, that might be you. Really? What's that? And you came back. You've become a powerful story. Oh, God. Powerful symbol. One the CRM may need to tell to win the hearts of the people who will see some of their freedoms delayed yet again. Delayed? Who's the person closest to you who's died in all of this? Carl. My son. He's who I saved. Tearing out that man's throat. Because that's the kind of man I am. What if I told you you would never have to suffer that kind of loss again? You can't guarantee that. You could keep them safe. You could bring them to us. <laughs> okay. I'm taking that chance on you. What are we doing, Rick? Michonne! I'm gonna need you to rein it in, sis. I love you, but come on, the you're stressing me out. Somehow, some way, we will survive. Really? How? We'll burn things to bring things back. Oh, don't she use his words against him. You know what's so crazy here? Swear on the sword. Swear on the sword. Knew it was gonna come. Swear on the sword. What to do? No. Oh! 
my god, the knee slide, Mr. Grimes! Why did you come back? To kill you, clearly! I'm trying to make sure I'm scared. Ricky can't fight. Okay, picked up a few moves. Oh, hey, we both don't got a hand now. I never lost my son. I lost myself. That's right. You brought me back. My wife brought me back. Tell him. You better tell him. One life. One unstoppable life. We're not dead. That's right. Right in your shriveled little heart. You are. Twist that shit. Ooh, with the hair all shaggy, that kind of reminds me of old Rick. Rick's like, it's been a minute since I killed me a man. <laughs> okay, what do we do now? How long before someone figures out he's dead? Do you want to meet now? Over. No. Bill gave me something to do already. Oh. Convenient. Can we fit this body in a box? Yeah, I, I don't really blame. I mean, I don't know if that's going to help, but I do think it was his plan. But how many more? Thorne knows the plan. All the soldiers know the plan. Oh, God, who are you? Why are you so big? God, longest elevator ride ever. It's like, have you ever been in, like, the elevator and, like, you know you have gas to pass and then, like, you think you're going to have a minute and then someone comes into the last minute? This is the feeling. How long is it? Will they notice? Lowest elevator ever. Oh my God. I knew it. I'm like, it's gonna leak blood. I knew it. Can you just tell him it's steak dinner? I'm so tense, you guys. I feel like I can't breathe. <laughs> I don't like this. What is that? God. Put your foot there, Rick. Just put your foot there, quick. Just put your foot there. Put your foot there. Finally, God. Please don't be like 10 people standing out here. Why'd you look down? Who looks down? No one looks down in an elevator. No one. Ricky, you're gonna need that fist. Not the body. Oh, my baby, no. You're gonna have to use your, oh, 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 oh. oh you let them both turn, damn. Oh, I bet you Harry Quinn loved being a walker. <laughs> he probably was like, yay, this is way more fun than walk than lost. Sorry, red shirt. But you shouldn't have messed with Rick Grimes. Oh, why are walkers so damn slow? You need one of them new agile ones from across the sea. Oh, spoiler alert if you haven't watched The World Beyond or Daryl Dixon. Hand. Or hand. Yep. Take off your helmets. We ain't got time for this. Rick? Yeah, she's gonna kill you. Michonne's gonna kill you. I hate this woman. You are going to turn around. You are going to go back inside. And you are going to undo whatever you do. There's no time for that. Not doing it. Oh. Yeah, you're going to fix this. No. I hope Beale bites your throat out. I'm so over you. This way. Yeah, Beale's gone. Bye, Thorn. Woo! <laughs> and the gas! That's right, Rick and Michonne! And Nat, thank you, Nat, from beyond. This is for you. Just a little longer. It breaks up quick. How are you still alive? How? I cannot believe Michelle has been exposed to chlorine gas again. Kick her ass. This is my wife. You pointed a gun at his wife. You destroyed the whole world. That's okay, I'll build it again. Why did you leave the fist, bro? You really should have kept that. Richard, I'm gonna need you to learn to fight. Punch her right in the kitty. I'm dead ass. Right in the kitty. The 
CRC voted unanimously for emergency oversight over the remaining forces of the CRM. And the city will now welcome new citizens as they may arrive. With oversight of the military now in the council's hands. The yeah, I would. Priority. Rich should have anxiety being in helicopters for the rest of his life. Oh my god, I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. Is that you, Haley? Is that Like, I'm not leaving my mom. I don't blame him. Little brave mom man. Yes, yeah, she did. Mama never, Mama never, ever fails. Can we do introductions now? <laughs> Michelle's like, get over there. <laughs> You're the brave man? Oh. He's like, he talks. Oh my God. Just, just on, please. Brick's a hugger. I am. She's like, I'll trust you, Mom. Can you give him a hug? Rick really needs a hug, please. It's like this hat. But maybe you can call me Dad. Maybe. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I knew you come back. Why is this voice so deep? Oh my god. Because? I believed. See, Rick? That's why you always listen to your way. At this point, yes, the Rhymes family is together again. All four of them, because I know there's another bun in that oven. Bring the score in. This is all I wanted, you guys. This is all I'd asked for. Oh, and they're bringing stuff. They're bringing supplies. Is this it? That's it? Okay, I think that's actually it, right? I am, I am happy. I am satisfied. I am satiated. I am ecstatic. I am, I am full. My heart is soaring. It is late. My neighbors probably hate me right now, but it's worth it because that ended exactly the way I needed it to. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Please. Thank you, Scott Gimple. Thank you, Denai Guerrero. Thank you. Andrew Lincoln for doing this for us Roshoners, us longtime soldiers where this is all we ever wanted. This is all we ever wanted. This is all we ever wanted. That's all we wanted. Thank you for this. Oh man, I know, I know right off the bat, I, I'm just gonna jump right in because I, I don't wanna talk too long because like I said, it is late as hell. I know that some people are gonna complain that this felt rushed, that this, this, fix that came in happened a little too quickly. But honestly, I think for what this was, it was absolutely the right ending. And I don't think it was rushed at all because one thing about the CRM is even though it's been around for, well, it was touched on in the main show, touched on in fear, pretty much the focal point of uh, uh, the world beyond, there was never like a clear established baddie, if that makes sense. and. Walking Dead has always been formulaically, every season's had like a baddie that, or maybe a couple of seasons lead up to like a baddie, which is usually a person that they need to take down in order to kind of get the world back into balance. But the CRM was just this big kind of nebulous, unformed cloud of a threat that was kind of looming over everything with the potential to do a lot of bad, but there was no real like body to put to it. Now, obviously Beale kind of filled that role, but considering the fact that before this episode, that man had like three lines, like we saw him in episode one, we saw him in episode three, and then we didn't see him again. 
he was not being built up to be the baddie. Like if anybody was the baddie, potentially it was Jadis and she was taken out last episode. So that's why I was perfectly okay with and pretty much believed that this finale was going to take the CRM down or at least take the the threat of the CRM in as regards to Rashon and their family and their community uh, away as a threat. Like I knew that that was going to happen. And it made sense because like I said, they haven't built up some big bad and we didn't need one. This wasn't the time or the place for one in this particular show. So <clears throat> I'm fine with that. Uh, I think it worked out exactly the way that it that it should have and could have. But let's kind of talk about some of the nuances of this episode. I really kind of like the way they did this. The way it was very much playing between uh, present and past. Past being like just before they took the helicopter and went back to the CRM. You know, <laughs> a lot of us online were kind of speculating as to like, wait, because the, the ratings came out for the episode a few days ago and it, it let us know there was going to be a little loving. In this in the episode, we were like, "When is there going to be time?" Like, well, we always love to see Rashon expressing their love for each other physically. When were we going to have time, right? How are we going to do this plan they were talking about and get home and have time for that? But anyways, we should have known if there's anybody who was going to find time for it, it was Rick Grimes. Okay, <laughs> Rick Grimes going to get it in, literally and figuratively, as much as possible, whenever possible. But anyhow, I really like how they showed kind of them having the conversation and having this moment again together right before they go back and execute their plan and that they're really kind of, the weight of it's really hitting them, you know? And we hear Rick say that line that we've heard a few times in the previews where he's like, are we insane for this? And she's like, yeah, we're certifiable. And then I love how the show used the footage from like the main show of both Rick and Michonne just doing out of their mind insane things to show that like, I've said this so many times, Rick and Michonne are the same person. They are, they really are two sides of the same coin. They are insane when it comes to protecting the people that they love or scrapping to live. Like they just, all bets are off. It is nuts. There's no lengths. There's no like, I wouldn't do that. No, that doesn't exist in their books if it's about preserving life or preserving the family, their family's life. So I love that, I love that, but anyhow, so yeah, they're having that conversation, which I think is necessary, that they both recognize that this is this is crazy and we are taking a massive risk. However, however, as Michonne keeps saying, because Rick understandably is very hesitant for a lot of reasons. He's been inside this organization a long time. He knows the breadth, the depth of it. He understands the, the fear that they can instill. But Michonne, as the grounding force that she is for him, she keeps saying, this is what we do though. This is what we do. Like we we save the world. This is the kind of people that we always have been. And I'm going to keep reminding you of that because this place tried to beat it out of you all these years. And my job is to remind you that you're the brave man who does what you need to do to protect the people that you love and to do the right thing, you know, for the world around you. Like Rick was a cop, right? That was the first job to serve and protect, right? He was one of the, he was a cop that really believed in the serve and protect, right? So anyway, so I like that they kind of showed that with Rick going back. And I mean, of course, I'm not going to talk much about Thorne because honestly, I feel like she was kind of a footnote in this episode. I knew that they were going to need to have something to up the, the stakes and the antics. But yeah, I mean, Rick, I, I understand. Like she obviously was relieved that Rick made it back. And, you know, she knew that something had happened. I know she knew from the second he came back that something had happened. And I think what is really interesting here is that I said it in the episode, Thorne and Rick were close, but like obviously nowhere near what Rick has with Michonne. But I think it's important that they pointed out that Thorne knows enough about Rick at this point because she's known him now for like, we don't know exactly the, when she came in versus Rick, but it's been at least four to five years. So she knows him enough to know when he's acting differently. You know what I'm saying? She's been around him enough to know how Rick was when he was trying to run away versus when he got super depressed versus when he turned into the, the, the walking dead when he'd accepted everything. So I think she noticed the second he showed up in this episode that he was different because you just can't not be right. Rick was carrying himself different. He had his head up a little bit more, you know, it just everything. And I think she could pick up on it, but she didn't really know how to put her finger on it. But anyway, we see that she's all hyped and Rick tries one more time to see whether or not there's anything left of the woman who believed in Okafor, but you know, by saying, hey, you know, remember what Okafor told us, it's because of Bethune, Bethune the Bethune saved my life, which was the truth. He's like, it's if she hadn't come in because of your working with me, I wouldn't be here right now. And we see that 
sadly, Thorne just kind of did the whole thing where she didn't really answer. And like Rick kind of saw in that moment that she was drinking the Kool-Aid. She just didn't want to. Like she was like, Okafor was wrong. He didn't understand. This is the way you'll understand once you get in there, right? Like once you get the briefing. And so we hear Rick basically like, you can see it in his face where he's like, man, that sucks. You know, <laughs> known each other a long time. You've helped me out, but you're dead to me now. Gotta go. So... <laughs> But him going in, getting the briefing, and uh, yeah, there was a long speech. I'm not, I'm not even gonna front with you guys. I really didn't care much. <laughs> I know a lot of people love Tara Quinn, and I do too. Like he's a great actor. I just, I didn't care. I didn't care. But he needed to get the the money's worth. I understand you don't hire an actor like that and not give him lines. So. <laughs> He did his whole speech about why the CRM is doing what they're doing. And he tries to make himself relatable with the, oh, you know, I had a rough childhood and I had to pick myself up by my bootstraps and join the military and got kicked around, went the nom twice. And I came back and it made me a man. And see, God, I've had to do some crazy things. And then, you know, when I realized what had to happen here, I did a battle back in my hometown, the hometown that raised me. And I sacrificed the whole city and people I love to protect the people that I cared about. That's the kind of great guy I am. It's the same as biting out a throat, right? And I'm like, even Rick, I love that Rick's face. Rick's face during that speech, he was literally like this. Like, I don't know how, I don't know how. Beale did not pick up on that because like Rick was disgusted. He's like, sir, I bit a man's throat out to save my son's life. And you let a bunch, a whole city get overrun by dead people when you are supposed to be protecting that city to win a petty war that didn't even need to happen. How are we, what? <laughs> like, like seriously, thankfully the Michonne sense has started to take over Rick. And he's like, yeah, now that you're saying this stuff out loud, you sound stupid. You sound crazy. I get why my wife had to literally throw my ass out of a hel helicopter to like, let me actually hear this stuff out loud because, oh my God. But anyhow, he keeps ranting on and on and on and pouring tea out of a Japanese teapot because he likes to appropriate, I don't know. But he's going on and on and on about how, you know, the sword that gives, uh, that takes life can give life. And again, it probably has to do with that book he gave Rick a couple episodes ago with that Rick, I'm sure, threw, promptly threw in the garbage. But he just tries to explain that, you know, he's trying to justify that he's doing the same atrocities that he claimed they were trying to stop at the beginning, like the, you know, all the bombings that happen with uh, Atlanta and everywhere else, but he's doing the exact same thing. But of course he's trying to say, but, oh, but, but we're doing it for a good reason. What was the excuse he gave? Oh, that humanity's got 14 years left based on some science from God knows who. Right? He's saying, oh yeah, there's disease, you know, uh, the dead are, there's millions of them, they're outnumbering us, um, there's not enough food out there, there's hunger, all these problems. If we don't do something, we're all gonna die, so this is why we have to do this, so that we can survive. Just us, just, just us, us, you know, just whoever we just deem, you know, worthy, just, just us, basically. Uh, everybody else, though, pfft, deuces, like, sucks to be you, like, what? What? Right? Like, it's like... The argument just was not well formed. It, it just didn't, there was at no point during that argument that I personally heard a reason why the people in the city deserve to live over the people in Omaha or the people in Portland or the people in the other communities that he plans to take out who might possibly at some point eventually get self-sustaining enough to be a threat, AKA refuse to be absorbed by them or, or live by their rules. No, he gave no reasons for that, zero, which again, Having everyone in the CRM and taking out all these other nations didn't explain how they were going to deal with the disease, how they were going to deal with the growing dead number, because they were actually going to create more dead. Let's not forget that, because they were going to gas them. So that means more walking dead. Um, it doesn't explain how they're going to create more crops or get more farm farmland or have people to actually work said farmland. Like my, I just, that's why I rolled my eyes so hard during it. Cause I'm like, I'm not hearing solutions, fam. I'm just hearing that you think there's not enough out there. So you need to take everybody out to make more for you. For what, again, the same 14 years? Like the math isn't mathing. Like I don't, how did Jadis, this is, this is why Jadis believed in this. Jadis is not too smart. Clearly neither is Thorne. Dumb people believe in this cult, cult, because I don't know what else to explain. Like, what other explanation is there? Because none of that made sense. The brochure is not brochuring, okay? The speech is not speeching. But anyways, I'm glad that Rick looked like he was about to throw up through all of it. And uh, basically, we saw that he was preparing. Like, the more he heard Beale talk, the more he realized, I have to kill this man. 
<laughs> the more murder rig started to emerge and it was so nice to see him again. It's been so long. Uh, I mean, he didn't have the coat and everything, but <clears throat> it was nice. It was nice to see him again. Yeah, it was, when it's all said and done, the line that Okafor said in episode one came back, the swear on the sword. I kind of figured as soon as Beale talks about the sword at the funeral that that was what he was talking about. But remember, Okafor said, swear on the sword, but don't let it take. As in, do what you need to do to get out of, you know, to get Beale off your back, but don't believe any of the nonsense that he's talking about. Thorn, not that smart. She actually let it take. So anyway, we get to that mother of a scene. And uh, he finally gets to the point where he's asking Rick to commit. The only things I found interesting about this scene were when he was asking Rick questions about him, like saying, who is the closest or who's the most, uh, the close person closest to you that you've lost since this whole thing started. And of course we know that would be Carl. And he explains, you know, of, of course, the situation of how, why he bit out a man's throat for him. And throughout this whole speech, we see that Rick is remembering all the people, or also all the people, first of all, all the things he's done. I love at first, the first question that was asked of him is what, what's the worst thing you've done or the craziest thing that you've done in the world? And of course, Rick's going through his Rolodex of, <laughs> Rolodex of crazy stuff that he's done, basically season 4B through 7. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I've done a lot of stuff. <laughs> Look at that. I've done a lot of really heinous stuff. Now that I think about it, <laughs> I am insane. My wife is right. Anyway, so he, you know, seeing that was just a nice reminder of like the coolest parts of Rick. I mean, Rick is cool overall, but those were some really fun moments from Walking Dead Prime. And then later on when he talks about who he's lost, we see that Rick starts to think about all the people that have, you know, come and gone. People have come into his group people he's loved, lost, some of them maybe not necessarily physically or like physically lost, but maybe lost in, in distance, etc. And it just, these, all these things just kind of build him up to the point where, like I said, he realizes that Beale has to go. Like Beale is the real issue here. Like it's his vision, as he explained earlier in the episode that, yeah, it's my vision. I saw it through. I came through with this. And once we're done taking out Portland, we're going to go over to the city and we're going to declare martial law and we're going to tell them what to do too. And if they don't submit, well, we're just going to take them out, right? Like it was just a, the man was insane. And I just don't understand how so many people didn't realize he was insane. Unless maybe they were just thinking, well, not me, I guess that, that's got to be the only excuse. But anyhow, whew, we have that moment. Rick takes Beale out. Like Beale realizes a little too late that Rick is not down and they have a bit of a fight. And thank God Rick has picked up some of the military moves because there's one thing I've said. I love Rick. I love Rick Grimes. I do. And he is lethal with a weapon. Oh, yeah, man, that man takes a beating. He, he, he can't fight that much, you know? <laughs> Compared to what we saw with Michonne, which we're going to get to her in a minute, my man needs to just take a little more time with the fighting. He needs to learn to fight a little bit more. But anyway, he got it done, though. He managed to push Beals. Beal died by his own sword. <laughs> How poetical is it that Beal died by his own sword that he was trying to get people to swear on? I love it. And I also love that Rick refused to swear on it because I thought he was going to do it and then do something crazy. But he was like, I'm not even going to make myself do that because ugh, you, you sicken me, sir. So anyway, he takes out Beal, which I actually don't think was part of the plan. <laughs> Looking at later on, I'm like, I don't think he planned. I don't think he was supposed to do that. I think he was supposed to just find out the plans and play along and then meet up with Michonne. But then, yeah, much like how Michonne had to leave that briefing, he was like, I got to kill this guy. I just got to. I got to. The, mm, the mm, murder rick is bubbling up and I got to do it. So anyway, he um, ends up having a body to have to take care of. But it turns out the body was very helpful. And um, yeah, uh, should we switch over? I kind I think I'm gonna bounce around with this review, guys, because it was very much a parallel story for a while. Um, we'll go to Michonne, Michonne, her job, because at first I was like, how did she get gear? Like, why is she geared up? And now I get it, because I'm like, she can't go back to the base. Like, <laughs> if she showed up at the base, they would, she have to be a consignee and she wouldn't be allowed to move around if she needed to. So she put on one of the, the outfits, one of the uh, military outfits, and she found Jadis's quarters ripped that place apart because that's what Jadis deserves. Her place knows no peace. And she thankfully finds the dossier. And I really love that moment where she, I mean, I yelled at her in the episode because I was like, girl, do we have time for this? But <laughs> I get it. Like the emotional release of her ripping that dossier because it wasn't just about the fact that this thing would have sent all kinds of hell to her family, but that little piece of paper 
what it did to her husband, what it did to her her family, what the hold that it had over Rick, the fear it put in him, the fear it put in Michonne. Like that that paper represented so much of what she went through up until that point that her ripping it apart was literally just all that pent up rage and and sadness and anger and frustration that she felt in episode four and episode three when she realized that things were not the way they were. The fact that that little piece of paper almost took her husband from her forever. Like I understand why she needed to just, you know, just rip it to shreds and just almost scream a battle cry while she was doing it. Let those tears flow. Like I get it. I do. Like I know, like I said, in the episode, I was like, girl, what are you doing? But I get it. I do get it. And I think it was a beautiful moment. Again, just snaps to deny showing once again, what a phenomenal actress she was because you felt her releasing in that moment. And finally knowing that at least at this point, her family would be safe and that her husband would be safe and they could get the hell out of there. And then unfortunately, as we see, she was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Someone walked in and she had to take, she took care of business. That CRM soldier, <laughs> she thought she could go up against a mama bear. That was cute. That's Michelle had to let her know that she is Okoye, okay? She is a citizen of Wakanda. She was not gonna go down like that. Uh-uh, no ma'am, no sir, not today. So yeah, she ended up taking her down and beautifully, like that was crazy. I was like, this is the hottest couple of the apocalypse. I'm sorry, no one's touching them. No one's touching them. That happened and I thought it would come back to bite us, but it didn't. I'm, I'm glad it didn't because I was like, mm. but I guess as long as she locked the walker in there, I mean, at that point, I'm pretty sure Michonne wanted a walker to just wander around in there because she was that angry with everybody. But anyhow, she decides to go into the briefing that's going on with all the soldiers that are there. And she hears what, first of all, she finds out what happened with Omaha. And then she hears about what's going to happen with Portland, which they're literally gearing up to do that day. And she finds out that they have planted people in Portland posing as students to find out prospects, promising prospects, children that they can extract from Portland right before they plan on gassing it the same way that Michonne had been gassed back in episode two. And again, if you watch World Beyond, this all was very familiar. Like hearing all this, I was like, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. classic CRM. <laughs> So anyway, that triggers Michonne on so many levels and we understand as an audience why it's extra triggering. One, kids, right? She's already thinking, I've been away from my kids. I haven't seen my kids. What, look what they're doing here. They're willing to take kids out. Imagine what they'd be willing to do if they ever found Alexandria. We saw her pick up that little, uh, that little toy rabbit when she was on her way to that briefing. Like her kids are heavy on her mind right now. And so to see something talking about only saving some children and using children to take children away from their families while they go and take out their entire communities, right? Like just, oh, and they say, yes, try your best to act neutral. The windows will be blacked out. Try not to show any trauma that you will feel and the children will inevitably feel. Like what? I, I feel like no one actually hears what they're saying out loud in this cult, but anyway. So Michonne hears this and you just, again, deny one of her gifts from season three. And thank God she had this gift because they weren't giving her enough lines back then. She can emote so well in her face. Denies eyes and face can literally tell you a whole story without saying a single word. And that is a that is a talent, people. It is a talent to be able to tell a whole story with your face and not actually utter a word. And she was in a mask and her eyes alone, I, I heard everything she had to say. The terror, the fear, the rage, the disgust, all of that just going by her eyes, you know, just going by, like you can almost see it, you know, all these emotions just flashing by. And so she finally gets up and leaves, which again, I kind of freaked out about, cause I'm like, Michonne, you're supposed to be a soldier. You're supposed to just know what this is about. You're supposed to chill, but I get it. Like that was just, I have to give Michonne a pass. I have to remember to give Michonne a pass because she is not the CRM, <laughs> right? She's not been, she's only been exposed to this for a short amount of time, unlike Rick, who'd probably be able to play it off, which actually he can't anymore because he's back to old Rick. But anyway, so she leaves and she's literally thinking at this point, let, I just want to get Rick and get the hell out of here, right? You see that she starts the walkie thing, which we find out from a flashback. They said that they're going to do their little walkie thing. If anything goes crazy or they discover anything that's, that's new and She's thinking, we gotta go right now. Let's just get out of here. This is too much. But then after she goes outside and takes some cleansing breaths, she's like, yeah, no, I can't. <laughs> Can I actually go home? Can I leave? Can I just leave all this behind, you know, and decide it's not my problem? 
And we realized she says, in that moment, she can't. So she's like, no, we got to do it. And she goes back in. And so that's where her and Rick end up meeting up. He's got a bo- well, he's got two bodies by the time she be- she finds him, which, first of all, Rick's, I, I forgot to talk about Rick sliding across that table with Beale. <sighs> anyway, and then he fights the largest possible CRM officer ever in that elevator. <laughs> and then actually when he gets out the elevator, but you know, good on Rick. He managed to literally punch that man to death. He punched him to death with his real hand, not even with the fake one, which he left behind. And I still don't get that, but I guess it's a representative of something he didn't want to be. I guess that would be it. Like he can get a different prosthetic that's maybe not a weapon, but I still think it was a good idea, right? Aaron has a whole club. Why can't he have that? But anyways, it's kind of hard to hug people with. Anyway, so yeah, he takes out, he's got two bodies. Michonne's like, what's going on? And he's like, I'll talk about it later. And they catch up and she's like, they both realize that they both know what's about to happen to Portland. And she's like, we, we can't, we gotta let, we gotta stop it. We have to do it our best to end it. Like we have the power to stop it right now. All the gas is down there. All the people who are supposed to perform this operation are in one place. We're never getting an opportunity like this again. And um, I really like that we have that beautiful moment where she's gearing up and setting up the the little, what do you, what you call that? That, that necklace of bombs, <laughs> the grenade, uh, ch- ch- what do you call those things you put around the garland, the garland of grenades, that's it, a garland of grenades. She's sending up the garland of grenades and we see that Rick <laughs> understandably says, you know, we could just go, like we still have time. We could literally just go hop in a helicopter and leave right now. Like we could do that. Like Beale's gone. He's the only person who could possibly find us. You got the dossier. They'll never find us. But, and we see that Michonne kind of looks at him and he says, and I just, you know, again, Andy Lincoln, you're acting, sir. You know, he's a little teary eyed and he's like, I'm angry. He's like, I'm so mad at the time that this place is stolen from me, all the time I've lost. Like it's all hitting him, right? Like Rick had deadened all that stuff up until episode four, right? He'd compartmentalized it. He pushed it down. He was just living with the barest amount of of emotion necessary to like, just get through day to day. And he didn't think about all these things, but now that he's fully awake and now that Rick is back, the real Rick is back, he's pissed. And that's part of the reason he was able to beat that man to death and and take out Beale was because he's thinking about all that, all those flashbacks we saw, all the time he's lost, the people he's lost, the, the, the moments he didn't get to experience and the fact that he's so close to getting back to his family. And now he has to do yet another thing to, to fix it and to make this world better. Like he's, I totally understood him in that moment and him just saying to Michelle, like, it's not that I don't think we should do the right thing here. I'm just saying that I kind of just want to go home. <laughs> I just want to go back to my family. Can I see my kids, please? Can I meet my son? I love, again, this shows how in sync and how amazing Rick and Michonne are and how perfect they are for each other because Michonne in that moment just stops what she's doing. She puts everything down. She walks over, she kisses him. And she's just like, she, first of all, she reminds him like, we're here. Like we are here right now. We we are back. Like you say, you wanna go back. We are back. Like this is us. This is the real us. And we are going home. Like, don't think of this like we're gonna fail. We're going home. We've gotten through hairy ass situations before. We're gonna get through this because we've got a damn plan. And we, what? We are what? We're unstoppable. That little hag that died last episode said it herself. We're unstoppable. So she just said, listen, boo, we're just doing, she's like, can we, we can't leave it like this. Can we, can we really go home and sleep at night knowing that all those people died and we could have possibly stopped it? Like, that's not the people we are. So, you know, Rick got his little pep top and he's like, you're right, baby. You're right, I forgot. Okay, you're right. And they set off their their plan in motion, which is actually really smart using walk. The way Michonne continuously finds ways to use walkers for label for labor, and she it needs to be studied because mm, she's such a genius when it comes to that. Carrying your bags, protecting you from the dead, being your pack mules, setting off your walker, like, oh, she's so smart. Anyhow, so she does this, and in the meantime of all of this, we have Thorn. Thorn figuring out that Rick would lie to her because he, of course, tried to come up with a reason for why he didn't meet up with her because she wanted to talk to him after the briefing. And as I said before, Thorne actually knows enough about Rick at this point to know when he's not being himself. And he did not sound okay on that walk. Even I was like, dude, you should have maybe taken two breaths (laughs) between when you took out this man and called her on the walkie because you sounded real antsy. But anyhow, uh, she decides to check things out because something doesn't feel right. And she sees that Rick lied about Beale going off to his spot. And 
she knows something must be up. And then we see that she starts to put the pieces together that like ever since Bethune got here, Rick's been real different, right? He's been acting up from when he came to my room and begged me to save her to how they acted out in the field to, you know, just always covering for her, always talking about her and finally hits him, hits her. And then of course she looks even thinks back even further to him saying like, my, my wife is not gone. Like she's still, my loved ones are still out there. So she puts it together and she recognizes that Dana has got to be the person that he was looking for. I'm not hundred percent sure how she figured out that they try to sabotage something with the summit, but I think she probably just thought, what would Rick want to do? And I guess it hit her that when she couldn't find Beale, that maybe he was going to try to do something at the summit, but she didn't know what. So either way, she ends up being the final monkey wrench in the plan. But thankfully, because she considers Rick family, she doesn't just take them out because that she could have done that. She literally just could have shot them both. It would have been the end. But once again, the power of Rick's connection to people, it uh, stops her from doing it. And she basically orders them to go back and undo what they're going to do, which is virtually impossible at this point. And I'm glad they didn't tell her what it was. And they go and they take cover. They manage to take cover. And Michonne, of course, knows what to do with chlorine gas now because of her very personal experience with it. And she gets them under a wet, literal wet blanket and everything goes off, chaos ensues. And somehow, somehow, how did Thorne survive that? I don't understand. She really should have either died from the blast or from the gas. I don't, anyway, I guess we just needed more drama. But anyhow, she saw what happened to Beale and that distracted her long enough for her not to go after Rick and Michonne for taking off, but their plan gets executed. All those soldiers died on the spot, basically, or they died from the chlorine gas, one or the other. And basically, Thorne was the only one left. And whew, it was nerve wracking, guys. I'm not going to lie. They had me. They had me in the first half, guys. They had me in the first half because I was like, I don't know. Like, I, I again, I felt 90% sure, like 99% sure the, sh the show wasn't going to do this to us. But they, I don't like when Rick gets, you know, enclosed by walkers. I don't like it. It reminded me a lot of when Carl got bit. I don't like it. But anyway... We had all of that with Rick trying to deal with that. Rick and Thorne fight. Once again, Rick gets his butt kicked. <laughs> Bless his heart. Man, I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to say that he was holding his punches because he didn't want to hit a girl like that. Yeah, that's it. Anyway, so they start fighting, but then Michonne shows up as usual to save her man. And yeah, she's like, Thorne, I don't think you know who I am. You don't know who I am. And you don't know what I do when people come after my man. When people try to hurt my man, they die. That's literally what happens. And guess what? She died <laughs> with another sword. I mean, it's not Michonne's sword and I'm kind of mad she never got that back, but I died. maybe she did. <gasps> maybe she did. I have to go back and watch the ending because now that everything's out in the open, but anyways, side note, sorry, brain scattered. It's late, but yeah, she, she just, she takes Thorne down and she tells Thorne, listen, this is, oh, cause Thorne tells her, what's that lame ass line she gave her? Oh, this is the end of the world. That The old world is dead. Love dies. And she's like, what? <laughs> and she was like, maybe your love dies. Maybe you give up on love and you give up on the people you love, but that's not the way we work. That's not how it goes in my household. Okay. The Grimes, we are the ones who live. We love. Our love cannot be denied. That's right. It cannot be denied. And it sure as hell don't die. So she takes care of Thorne. And then of course she goes after to find Rick, but we see Rick, he's being overwhelmed and he has to do a bit of a Hail Mary to get all these guys off of him. He has a grenade on him and he does a really crazy move. Very Rick, actually very Rick, very insane. Throws this thing and uses these bodies to shield him, which is very risky, but it works. It works, it gets the bodies off of him. And of course, Michonne, very reminiscent to me of their episode, Say Yes, when she thought that Rick got devoured. You know how she just kind of stopped and you just kind of see her eyes get wide and her breathing starts getting fast. And like, I, if she dropped the sword, I would have been like, it would have been exactly like that. Cause we all know that people keep saying, you know how people have said that if something happened to Michonne, Rick's going right after her. Like it's kind of both ways guys. Like. That episode, Michonne was prepared to let herself get eaten by walkers after she thought Rick had died. So it, I was getting that vibe again. Like she was like, oh my God, if this man just, just lost, if I just lost him now after everything, I don't know that Michonne would have made it out of there. But anyway, thankfully Rick came stumbling out with his little derpy self and they had another beautiful reunion hug and then they got the hell out of there. So yeah, that was, that was that. They managed to stop what would have been another Omaha, another mass destruction of innocent people. 
And uh, we just end up with a montage after that of, at that point they were able to, because obviously the city would have wanted to know what happened with, when <laughs> almost all of their military gets wiped out. I don't know, I don't think it's really worth touching on. Thorn in the end said, you know, that she recognizes now that Orcafor was right. I'm like, oh, that's cute, bye, die. Like it was, I just love how both Rick and Michonne didn't care. Like she's like, oh, Okafor was right. You were right after all. And she hands Rick the mask. And I love that they just, just took the mask and they're like, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, they're so done with anybody who's in their way anymore. I love that they didn't give her any long speeches and Rick had not, Rick was just like, give me this damn mask, girl. You actually had me messed up. You're gonna sit here and choke on this gas, bye. Didn't even give her the, the luxury of not dying as a walk or turning into a walker, just left her there. That stuff was cold, but the whole military wiped out. They were able to talk to the city, so they changed their policies. They said, yep, they voted to say that now anyone who wanted to leave the city could leave if they wanted, or if there was people that they wanted to go look for, they would help them, find them, even bring them back to the city if they wanted. And that that invitation was open to anyone who survived as well. So CRM threat has effectively been neutralized to our knowledge. I mean, I feel like there's probably still military out there possibly, but we don't care, right? At this point, for the point of our story, the CRM is effectively neutralized and now Rick and Michonne can go home and actually breathe knowing that there isn't some military threat looming in the horizon some someday that might show up and you know, do exactly what they did to Omaha. So yeah, we have our couple finally going back home and oh my God, we had our reunion. We had our reunion, you guys, and it's all I asked. Didn't I say at the beginning of the episode, I just want them to survive and I want them to see their kids. I need Rick to meet RJ and I'm so glad they gave us this reunion. I'm sure that they were probably questioning whether or not it was a good idea to give us all of that, but I'm glad that they gave us the reunion. I'm glad that they used the original actors. I know there was some talk from some people saying that maybe they should switch out the actors because as you know, the, the girl who plays Judith just turned 17. Like, so when she filmed this, she would have been like, what, 15? No, that was last year. So yeah, she was still a teenager is my point. She's no longer a little girl like she was when Michonne left. And then of course, RJ was like five. <laughs> and now the actor who plays RJ is like, his voice is changing for God's sake. I'm like, oh my God. But I'm glad that they still use the same actors. I think that was a nice touch. Um, they could have recasted it, but I think that this just felt a little bit more authentic. And yeah, I'm glad we got a minute. I'm glad we didn't just get it in like a silent montage. Even if we'd gotten that, I would have been okay with it. But I'm glad that we got, you know, Rick getting to talk to Judith and Judith being able to, you know, say to him, you know, I, I knew you'd come back. I'm glad you came home. I didn't want you to be lonely. Like Rick needed to hear all these things to know that all of that he did, all that he sacrificed was all worth it in the end, like this was the reason he did all of this and why Michonne was so stubborn about it. And then yes, him and RJ, I mean, awkward, but cute, which is exactly the way I expected it to be, right? Like RJ has never met this man, but I really like that, you know, I love that line where he's like, maybe you can call me dad. Right, like, oh my gosh, Rick. Oh, he's got so much catching up to do. I just, and the way Andy played it, the way he was kind of like awkward in the back when Michelle was hugging the kids because he really just has no idea how to interact with them anymore or if they remember him. And oh, that part was kind of heartbreaking too, just because knowing how much Rick loves his kids, oh, it just sucks so much that he lost so much time with them. But anyway, I'm not complaining. I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was well done. And I love that he got to give RJ a big fat hug. And yeah, I mean, I'm not even gonna lie. I just like wanna watch like two more episodes of them just catching up. I would watch that. That sappy stuff is all right up my alley. I would love it. <laughs> Am I being greedy? I might be. But anyways, that's how we ended it. Um, they decided to end it on a happy note, which The Walking Dead literally usually never does, but they did. Does this mean it is the end of this show? I don't know. I don't know. I think that... I like that they did end it so that if there isn't a sequel of any kind, I feel like us as an audience, especially us Rishoners, I feel like we got everything we wanted. I personally am, I feel like this was a gift. I feel like they just gift wrapped this finale to us and this whole series to us. And I'm happy with it. Honestly, if we don't get any more, of course I'll miss it, but I feel like I'll be, I will rewatch this series multiple times. I can tell you that right now. It'll be a source of comfort for me for years to come. So I'll be fine with what we got, but I do think that they left it open-ended enough that they absolutely could do more. Maybe not necessarily a Ones Who Live. 
I've said this before. I don't think we are necessarily gonna get another Rick and Michonne centric show. Cause I feel like their arc definitely was completed in this show. But maybe, you know, with other people, I know a lot of people want to see Rick and Daryl meet up again. And I think that that's cool too. I think that'd be great. It'd be great to see other people react to seeing him come back. I kind of wish we had a little bit of that too. But like I said, if we don't get it, I won't cry. But I think there's definitely potential for more. And with these two amazing actors, if we get these three at the helm again, I have no doubt that whatever they do in the future would still be just as good. So yeah, I have talked enough guys. I said I was gonna keep it short and I talked for like 40 minutes, but it was fantastic. It was a really, really good, really, really good finale. It gave me everything I wanted. It gave us some classic Rick and Michonne. It fit with the scale of the show as well, as far as how they handled things and how they ended it. I have no complaints, honestly. I, I really like this series overall. It was the best spinoff I have watched out of all of them. And I have watched all of them now, um, except for Fear. I didn't finish Fear. But anyway, I've watched all of them at least at some point. And this is the best, the best one by far. Thank you again, Scott, Andy, Deny. Run them their awards for this. AMC pay them whatever they want if they're willing to come back. I love this series from beginning to end. It was great. Episode four is still my absolute favorite. This one comes second because of the reunion. But yeah, I loved it. I loved this whole experience. I loved connecting with Roshoners online and all the love we got to share with all this. It was fantastic. And I love that Andy and Denai made sure that Michonne and Rick either made out or made a baby in every episode. That's all we ever wanted in the main show. They made up for, they made up for what, six seasons of them being together on the main show in six episodes. They gave us more Rick and Michonne content, loving on each other than we ever got. So we have been blessed. So whew, that's it guys. I need to go to bed. I need to let my neighbors, you know, not hear me continue to yell. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this whole series with me. Please let me know what your overall thoughts of this episode as well as the series are below. Please, please clock in. Let me know what's up if you did make it to the end of this review. And uh, if you don't watch anything else of mine, then thank you so much for this journey. But hopefully you will be able to find something else that you can watch and continue to stick around with me. Otherwise, if you do watch me and other things, I will see you in the next episode.